Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan and what I'd like to do today is introduce you all to my Intel financial report for 2019. Now the purpose of this video is to kind of show you all how I do my financial analysis, you know, what are the steps that I take and, and also to introduce you all to the financial model that I use in order to interpret, you know, Intel's financial, you know, income statement, balance sheet and their financial ratios. So pretty much the purpose is just to kind of give you all a starting point as to how I do my, um, how I do my financial analysis. So please um, also understand that I am looking for trends. So once I, the initial, the initial starting point for the, my financial analysis is always identifying trends. You know, what's going on with the income statement and the balance sheet and the financial ratios. From those trends that I identify, that's also a starting point to find more out, to find, to, to go searching for some more information. You know, so for example, if Intel's, um, you know, if revenues are all over the place, you know, why is that? And it gives you a starting point to ask questions and then to do some more in-depth research. Now, also when I do my initial trend analysis or my, um, my analysis, and I might say things that are a little bit contradictory. And the reason for that is, is because again, it's, it's an initial analysis and you're trying to get some thoughts and ideas as to what's going on. So hopefully this is um, helpful. And so let's go ahead and without far further ado, let's go ahead and dive into my financial model. And on a final note with that, please understand also the spreadsheet that I have that I'm going to go over is not included in my financial report. So at the end, I'll give you some information. If you want to get some more details for the financial report, you can buy. But the spreadsheet, I do take parts of it and put it into my financial report and explain it. And you'll be able to see the financial ratios and their calculations and their formulas. But I'm not going to give you the spreadsheet for you to manipulate. So hopefully um, everyone can understand that. All right. Without further ado, let's go ahead and um, get going with this bad boy. So when I do my uh, financial analysis, first thing I'm always going to do is take a look at the executive team. You know, I kind of want to get a good idea as to how much, you know, the, the organization is paying their executives. You know, if they're paying them just, you know, not enough, then, you know, what's going on? Where are they getting paid? If they're paying them an exorbitant amount, why? Or is the company really doing that fantastic? So in this particular scenario here, Mr. Swan, he's making about $5.8 million. That's a hefty little paycheck, um, especially, you know, once we start getting into this analysis, I'm not sure that's, you know, really justified. And that's a whole lot of money. And the company really does seem to be performing at an, an elite level, in my most humble of opinions. Um, the VP, you know, four million. I mean, we've got this is a chunk of change and a half that they're paying out this on this executive team. You know, I, I mean, I hope they're worth it because, you know, I mean, I don't know. We'll take a look. Next thing we need to take a look at is going to be the stocks. So in and now also, you know, we are in July right now of 2020. Um, but I did put this report together back in February. So that's the stocks I'm going to be taking a look at. So in that time frame, that looks like they were about the 52, 51, 52 dollars. And then over the course of the year, they are able to increase their um, their stock price substantially at approximately a, almost a 30 percent annual growth rate. That is phenomenal for a multinational corporation such as this. However, with Apple coming out and saying that they're making their own chips, um, you know, there's definitely going to be some um, pressure on the stock price, in my most humble of opinions, um, in, in the um, in the short to you know meet monitor term. So keep a look at that. But annual growth rate almost thirty percent for the stock price. Um, that that definitely justifies an elite. Um, payment for the executive team if they can maintain and you know stay innovative. Dividend payout. Um, good thing about dividend payout is um, that on an annual basis, on a dollar amount, they are increasing. So you know, kudos for them. However, as percentage-wise, the growth rates going from eight percent to two percent to twelve percent to three percent. So it's a little bit all over the board here. Um, you know, I like that, you know, the 8% growth here and the 12% growth, but, you know, it seems like they're hitting, um, you know, high, high growth rates every other year, which is an excellent trend to identify because now we know that quite possibly in 2020, they're going to be hitting a higher dividend growth rate as compared to the other year. So that's one trend um, that we can definitely discuss. Not, not too bad. Next thing I want to take a look at is going to be their revenues. So Intel in 2015 start they ended 2015 at about 55.3 billion dollars in revenues. Over the next several years, 
they would grow, um, they, would, they would actually grow quite well. The load bottom put all the way up to about $71.9 billion. Not too bad at all. Now, once I'm done with um, identifying just, you know, a broad overview of the income statement, another thing I'm to identify right here is going to be, you know, the depreciation. It doesn't really look like they're um, writing off too much depreciation. And then the SG&A, I like this. Um, their revenues are increasing, like I said, $55.3 billion and $71.9 billion. However, their SG&A, their overhead is going from $7.9 billion to eight point three. billion but then it's consecutively falling over the next several years. That is an excellent trend to identify as well. You know, when they're able to increase their revenues but decrease their overhead, then that tells us that in, indirectly they're gonna be, they should be able to increase their profit margins. So once I'm done taking a look at the whole income statement in its totality, I'm gonna break off and just take a look at you know, each line item individually in my reports. And so for this one right here, we've got, again, an average growth rate of about 6.9%. Now, that's not too bad for a multinational corporation um, that's in this mature phase of the business cycle. A 6.9% growth rate, in my opinion, is, a, is an above average performance for the company. Again, another kudo for the executive team. Detrimentally speaking, though, their cost of goods sold. Their raw material that they pay to, to make their processors or the chips or whatever, you know, hand baskets that Intel makes, whatever they're making, it's costing them, their, their growth rate for cost of goods is 9.7%. That is exceeding the growth rate for revenues. So th this situation right here, it can't, it can't happen for the long term. You can't have a growth rate of 6.9%, but your cost of goods is growing at almost 10%. It's not going to happen. You, your gross profit margin is going to be shrinking too much. Um, it, one or two things is going to have to happen. The, the company is going to have to include increase their sales price, or they're going to have to do a better job negotiating their raw material costs. One of the two or both needs to happen, and it needs to happen in the short term because um, this is really this is really squeezing their gross profit margin. Can't continue. Next thing I'm going to take a look at is going to be the totality of the balance sheet. Um, just looking at it real quick, I'd love to look at the short-term investments. Intel does have it. It grew from you know 2.6 billion to 3.2 billion in 2016. However, in the next three years, they would drop to almost just just over a billion dollars in short-term investments. That's something that, that tells me that the company is either using their short-term investments to pay their dividends, to fund their company, or to expand. They're, they're doing something with that money. And, you know, it's great if they are, but we just have to keep, them, keep an eye on their cash position. I mean, if they start, you know, going to zero um, short-term investment, then we have to really look hard at the cash and, you know, see if they have enough funds to, you know, stay solvent for the short term. Next thing I like to look at is going to be the long-term debt, one of my favorites. So in 2015, the organization had about $20 billion in long-term debt. They held that at 2016, but they bumped that up to two, um, $25 billion in 2017. And they've also maintained that elevated amount for the next three years. So um, the trend that I would identify here is that they kind of like to identify a capital structure, a specific amount of debt they, they want to have for a moderate term, one to two to three years. And then after that point in time, every two or three years, it seems like they they reevaluate their capital structure and either increase their debt, which it kind of looks here, or but they're just in general, they're, they're examining their capital structure to make sure that it's optimized. Another kudos for the executive team. The, this looks like a, a solid strategy. It seems to be working well for them based on the trends. It's not bouncing all the way or all over the world. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and break this off and come and identify um, some of the line items. One of the biggest line items I'm going to want to take a look at is going to be the inventory. So as, a com as, compared, to the, um, as compared to total sales, their inventory position was about 9.3% in 2015. In the next several years, their inventory position as compared to sales would grow to 12.2%. This is not a great situation, especially for a, a technology company. Unfortunately, inventory goes obsolete. It's going to happen. A, a new innovation is going to come out. It's going to make their product um, obsolete. They're going to come up with a new set, of, new set of chips, so on and so forth. When they're carrying so much inventory, then they're going to run the risk of having obviously too much inventory 
in the obsolescence. So that's going to be one thing that I would be, um, I'd keep my eyes open on that and you know, maybe dig a little bit deeper on that aspect as well. Another thing I like to take a look at is going to be the property, plant, and equipment. If the organization is growing their property, plant, and equipment, that tells me they expect growth for the future. This is definitely the case for Intel. $31.8 billion, they grow it up to 36.1, 41.1, 48 billion, and then 55.3 billion. They are growing and they're growing and they're growing. And when it's property, plant, and equipment, when it's these, when these, it's these fixed assets, the high dollars that it seems like they're spending, then that just tells me they expect future growth um, for the foreseeable future. All right, next thing we're going to take a look at is going to be the ratios. Um, one, of, one of the ratios that is near and dear to my heart, I like to cover this with just about every, um, every organization that I look at, is going to be the current ratio. The current ratio, the, the um, formula for it is quite simply the current assets divided by the current liabilities. So we've got a fraction here with the current assets upstairs and the current liabilities downstairs. Now, if the current assets are worth more than the current liabilities, then we're going to get a fraction of 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, and so on and so forth. The higher the current liability, current assets as compared to current liabilities, the higher the decimal or the number is going to be. If it goes below one, that means they have more debt, more current debt, more current liabilities as compared to current assets. Not a great situation for a company to be in because, you know, it's, they start running the risk of insolvency. All right, so with that said, current ratio for Intel in 2015 at the end was 2.4. Seems like they had way too much money here. They're, they've got money sitting in the account and their, um, or in their current assets as compared to current liabilities too much. They, they need to do something other with other that something else with their money instead of leaving it in their current assets. Um, like I said, the perfect, uh, not the perfect, but the golden rule is 1.0. They will exceed that. Great that they're not insolvent or going to have um, an issue in the short term, but not so great that, um, not so great because they have just a little, little too much, way too much. Now they would correct that issue in 2016 to bring it down to 1.75. 2017, they prove it even better. They bump it up a little bit higher only to bring it down even further in 2019. So I like this 1.4 right here. So where they're at right now with the current ratio, seems like they've found a sweet spot. They can probably even bring this down a little bit further, maybe closer to a 1.1, 1.2. If they start falling under that 1.0, I wouldn't be concerned. Uh, retail stores, they like to fall below that, but they also are a cash, you know, they're just a cash generating machine. Walmart, they're continually getting money in every single day. Whereas when you're dealing with microchips, you know, you got to send out, you got to wait for your invoice to be paid. It's, it's not as a cash generating machine as, you know, the retailer. So I'd be a little bit concerned if they start falling below 1.0. Uh, next thing we're going to take a look at right here is going to be their total asset turnover. How efficient is an organization using their um, their equipment or their assets in general. So they ended 2015 at 0.55 and they would, um, they would go to 0.51 and 0.52. So this tells me that the company is not using their assets as efficiently year over year in these from three years right here. They would improve that in 2018 only to fall back down in 2019. So to get a better idea of how they're using their equipment, we'd go to their fixed asset turnover. This tells a detrimental story here in 1.74. So they were, you know, they were kicking pretty good here in 2015 at 1.74 for their fixed asset turnover. However, they're using their fixed assets less efficiently. Their revenues, their fixed assets are not making as much money per dollar um, year over year. So it's going to fall to 1.6 to 1.53 to 1.43 to 1.3. This is not a good trend. This is just saying they've got too much fixed assets as compared to what they really need to generate those sales. Now, if we remember just a few minutes ago when we talked that the company is taking on more and more property, plant, and equipment. So they're increasing their property, plant, and equipment, but they're not, they're not using it as efficiently. Guys, what the hell are you doing? Quit. 
I mean, if you're going to, if you need these property plant and equipment and you expect your revenues and you continue to grow to, to meet those demands, then I understand that. But when you've got a five year trend showing that, that you're being less and less and less efficient, that just tells me that the management team's dropping the ball. All right. So hopefully this little, quick little um, examination of the company's current, um, their financial ratios and their income statement, their balance sheet is helpful. If you all want some more detailed information and want some calculations um, for the financial ratios to take a look at the more trends, um, jump over to my website at qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash Intel financial statements and financial ratios. On this website, you'll be able to pick up my, my Intel financial report on um, which I do more analysis for the income statement balance sheet and the financial ratios. Also, you can pick up Intel's annual reports. I've got five years worth of them, one easy download. So hopefully this, um, web, this little um, video was helpful. If you liked it, two thumbs up. If you want to pick up my report, jump on over to my website and hope everyone has a fantastic day. Thank you.